What's going on guys? Happy Fly Day. We made it another Friday. Woohoo! Today, uh, happy Fly Day, we're gonna tie, yes, a crayfish pattern. Yes, another crayfish pattern. But this one gonna be way easier. Uh, we had great success on this up in uh, Peterborough area. Uh, swinging large rivers uh, for small bass. Uh, cut a few other weird like, rock bass with it and another panfish. But it's a really easy tie. Uh, because basically the fish have like three seconds to look at it, if that. They're not staring at it. It's not like you're spotting stock and carp or you're like, you know, casting in a lake where the fish can look at a long time. It's basically in the current and it's basically gone before the fish can know what's what happened. So it's pretty easy tie because like, you don't need the detail and stuff. You just need a silhouette to look like a crayfish pretty much, right? So I did some experiments with some few materials, um, kind of mix it up. And this is what I come down to uh, color combo and materials. Um, so. Let me run through the material list, and then we'll hit the vise and we'll tie this fly, okay? So let's start with a uh, hook, use number four Mustad. You can tie it in bigger if you want, it's this deer hair uh, stinger hook. You can tie it in a bigger hook if you want to tie it in a bigger hook, but I find number four is kind of good for uh, in that one to two inch crayfish size, which is be best for uh, one to two inches, which is best for pretty much all bass, some smallmouths, so big ones, small ones. And really when I'm fishing for smallmouth, if we get a big one, that's amazing. Like you saw a video that James got an awesome monster on this, this little small crayfish. But really, uh, it's just about numbers, really, for, for me and having fun and catching lots of fish and getting everybody together and have crack a few jokes. So that's a hook. And then dumbbells, two different types of dumbbells. Uh, either a small dumbbell with the eye on it. You can go eye or no eye. It doesn't really matter. I just have these ones today, so I'm going to use these ones. It's small, 5 30 second. Uh, I also tie with the medium dumbbells as well. Depends on the current. But you can always modify the current by adding a sink tip, changing the tip on it, because you just put your rods up there. But if you want to, you're using a single hand rod, you can put a sinking leader on there, same thing, or put a heavier dumbbell on there, kind of get the same effect. More options, right? Legs, we're going to use these uh, gold amber uh, hanter legs. I tried to get a little bit of flash, uh, kind of basic color, really, just an olive goldy green uh, gold fleck, um, crayfish color ish. Right, I like those ones. I tried a few other ones, but this is the one I like the best. And then for the shell back, we're gonna use uh, fox fur. Right? Yeah, I said it, fox fur. Now you can use a gazillion materials. I just find this in for the current and swinging for what we're doing. This fox fur moves absolutely amazing. So, and then for the body, you can use this white fox fur on the bottom if you want, or tan. But I prefer to use this. Um, Isolated sheet fur. It's a little more fiber, a little more motion kind of bottom sides contour. So the fish is looking up at it, he sees those little fibers inside the uh, sheet fur move a little bit more than the top does. The top's kind of, it moves a little bit at the tip, but the most part it's like a shell back of a crayfish, right? And then you leave a bit of it a, a longer in the front for the um, tail of a crayfish. And that's it. No flash, no eyes, no not this legs, two materials, a dumbbell, and a hook. That's it. Yeah, right? Easiest fly ever to tie. So uh, let's get, uh, let's find my coffee. Or if I find my, I don't even know where I find my coffee. And uh, I don't know where it is. I gotta find my coffee. I never get the vice. All right, hook of the vice. Piece of thread, like usual. Dumbbell. This way, this way, a little uh, wrap on both sides, figure eight going on, Not under the dumbbell over the hook, Both times, pull it tight, wrap to the back, and then we're going to take our legs, I like to take about four legs. Four full strand of legs, right, like so, and then I want them to hang off quite a bit, so I'm going to cut them right there. So I have this little strand and this of the other strand. This is going to be for antennas and claws, and this is going to be for our actual legs. 
So I'm going to tie it in here a little bit overhang. So we're going to use this like this. I'm going to use this for the mouth part, so I'm going to buck, back a bug over again. Kind of do both things at once. And go back to the eyes again. Oh. Probably should have got this sheep hair out. Take a clip of sheep hair. We don't want it too long, but you don't want to go past the legs, right? Pick the under fur out. Of the under fur, if you ever use sheep hair for, but it's really like buggy. Probably like this much sheep hair, right? And you want it to go on there so it doesn't go past the legs. And so we can probably cut this a bit shorter. So it comes over top of that, like so. Right, and then we'll just put this over top. I like to put a little bit of material there on the uh, eyeball so it doesn't uh, so protect them. Tie that down there. I'm gonna take our other legs that we did, right? And then put them right there. Same thing, a little figure eight action going on. So they stand out, so they flare out. To the sides. Pull them, pull that one that way, and now they're right to the side, right? Then invert the fly, cut off the slip. There we go. Clean that up a bit. Like that. Invert the fly. Take the box fur. Right to cut right out the hide. About that much fox fur. All right, same thing. We're gonna cut pull the under fur of that, and we're gonna leave a little bit in the front and make a little tail. Just tie it right in front of the dumbbell. And I have to go on both sides of the eye, just a little bit, just to wrap it around, and then back behind it. I don't want to make it tight there, I just want to make it secure, basically figure eighting the box fur. And underneath, like so. And then whip finish. Nope, oh, stuck on the leg. And we're done. I've done so many of these. But we but you just gonna make sure you when you measure your little tail at the end, make sure you don't go past your rubber legs. See? Now that is my little easy and then you separate the legs. Put this little tab on there. Take the tab off. Right? That's that, that's that. You can give it a bit of comb, pull some of this other sheet fur out, right? it's gonna come out a bit more. And that is my easy swinging crayfish. <laughs> right? Awesome fly, works great. Shabam. Well, that concludes my uh, spring and crayfish pattern. Uh, it's like a, like a typical guide fly, I guess you want to call it. Quick and easy, t quick and easy tie. You can bang them a bunch of them at a time and go out there, and if you lose a couple, it's no big deal. It could really probably take you like five minutes. You can probably tie this faster than you can probably could tie a woolly butter. Anyways. I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. If you really like this video, hit the subscribe button. Thanks everyone for watching, and I appreciate your support. I'm Tails and Chasers. I'm in.